Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are covering the uh, theory videos for Chapter 5, which is about inventory. And as, as always, under, accounting is about understanding and application. You know, if you're applying, you know, and you're watching the video, if you, if you don't get, if you do the work and you get it wrong, and then you watch the video, you you know, you should be understanding the application part of it. That's my doing it. But if you're, you, you don't get it, all right, just from watching the video, um, you know, that is, you know, a lack of understanding of the theory. Just watching the video should correct the application aspect of it. But if you don't understand what, what's going on, it's most likely because you don't understand the theory and you need to go back and watch uh, these videos again. And if you still don't understand it, then um, you know feel free to contact an instructor. And so I'm going to jump down here to um, the gross profit method. And um, basically, the gross profit method um, estimates. All right, let me get my pen here. You know, the gross profit method basically estimates your inventory. Okay. Um, you know, if you you look in the textbook, you'll see uh, the formula, and I'll write it out here. Um, you have your beginning inventory, and then you're going to add in your purchases. Okay, and I should call that net purchases, right? Because when I talk about net, I'm talking about purchases, less discounts, less returns and allowances, which gives you your net purchases, right? Um, then we have to add in shipping costs if you happen to have individual invoices for shipping okay and that all make um, gives you when you add all that up that gives you your uh, cost your cost of goods available a v a i for sale. Now, I am not going to go over all of this because this was in the very first video for the theory portion, right? The first video for the theory portion of this chapter, all right? So if you haven't seen that video and you don't know what I'm talking about for cost of goods available for sale, you know, go back to the, the first video and watch that video, okay? Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, we then take out, we subtract out our ending inventory. Okay, and remember that ending inventory, you know, we do a physical inventory in order to get that ending inventory, right? Um, and when we do that physical inventory, you know, we put it on our books, right? And when we subtract what's available, right, and we take out our ending inventory, that gives us our cost of goods sold. Right? Now, um, if you watched the previous video to this on life, uh, FIFO and LIFO, I mean, and this goes um, to you know the specific ID method and the average cost method. I mean, you know, you know, they have a you know an ending quantity on hand, but in the FIFO and LIFO video, I do talk about you know, the quantity on hand. And I use the example of having a cooler with milk in it. And if my book show and I, uh, my books had showed that I had 130 gallons of milk, right? But I know that's not what's in the cooler, right? What ended up being in the cooler was 35, okay? 35 gallons of milk. And so the difference between the two was uh, 95 gallons. Right? That 95 gallons is, you know, the 35 is my ending inventory. Okay, the 95 gallons that was sold or stolen or broken or went bad or whatever have you becomes my cost of goods sold. All right. So when you're thinking about this, let me erase some of this here, and I'm going to rewrite it. Okay, so if I have my cooler, right, 
and I start out with a beginning inventory of say 25 in the cooler, 25 gallons of milk in the cooler. And then notice we have net purchases plus shipping. And in the previous video I added, uh, I think it was 30, and then I added 35, and I added 40, okay? When I add them all in, you know, my books, right, you know, will show I keep getting invoices, and so I started out with 25 on my books, and when I add it to 30, I add it to 35, you know, I get an invoice, I add the 30, I get an invoice, I add the 35, I add, uh, get an invoice, I add the 40, my books show I end up having 130 on my books, right? Well, that's what's available for sale, you know, this is all of what's coming in. That's what available for sale is what's coming in what I could what what I've received that I can sell all right that's available for sale goods available use use those words the trigger in your mind that that thought process because the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold is exactly that what's the cost of the goods that I sold well, when I do the inventory, right, and I, you know, my ending inventory is when I do the physical inventory and I say, oh, all I have is 35 left, okay, that's my ending inventory, right? Well, if I had, if I had stuck 130 of these into the cooler, but now I only have 35, that means 95 were sold or broken or went bad, you know, the, the milk went sour, went bad, or whatever have you. So they're no longer available, all right? And that's what gives me my cost of goods sold. All right. So basically, that's it for the gross profit method. Um, but what is what is important here? And I'm going to step out just a little bit, go beyond the theory here, all right? To be able to help understand where this all comes into play, all right? Um, if you recall, um, on our income statement in the revenue section, right? Revenues we have our sales, you know, um, and I'm going to call this net sales, which is basically um, your, dis, you know, set net, your sales, less discounts, less returns and allowances, right? Um, you have your sales, and then you subtract out your cost of goods sold, right? That's where that's going, and that gives you your gross profit, all right? And from your gross profit, then you take out the rest of your expenses, right? And you end up with your profit or loss for the accounting period. So, you know, as I had said back in other theory videos, when we first got started, we were talking about revenues, less expenses. On a very simplistic level, gave you a profit or loss, right? But as we gain more depth and knowledge, we're exploring and expanding different aspects of uh, different things. And right now we're just looking at the income statement. I mean, we're not even into the, the balance sheet yet and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we had, you know, like this idea, okay, well, if I look at revenue, right, well, what's my revenue? I could take, I look at sales, right, less discounts, less returns and allowances. And remember, um, we're also talking about terms and, you know, percentages, you know, uh, quantity discounts, things like that. So notice how that all expanded. So now for revenues now became this uh, great big formula just to be able to get our net sales. All right. Um, which is which is what we had for revenues. And now we're looking at our cost of goods sold. And remember, our, our revenue section, right, um, now includes this idea of gross profit. Well, our cost of goods sold, now all of a sudden, here is everything you need to know about cost of goods sold. All right, all of this can be added in. It's no longer simply, oh, I bought something and I put it in inventory, okay, using specific ID, and then when I take it out, you know, when I sell that item, I take it out and I put it over to cost of goods sold with one journal entry. No, if you're not using specific ID, you have to go through this here whole method. Right, and so now it's an ex it's you know obviously it's not just one line item like you're looking at here. You have to know all of this in order to be able to calculate the cost of goods sold. 
which then you know gives us our gross profit remember gross profit is not your bottom line we're looking at the gross profit simply because we want to know how much money we make on the sale of that item before we have to take out all the rest of our expenses like advertising and uh, utility expenses and so on and so forth in other words you know if I you know if I have an item that costs ten dollars and I sell it for thirty all right that means I you know I have a twenty dollar spread you know that's not profit right yes it's profit on that item when you sold it but I have to take out like I said the other expenses out of this twenty dollars right? so um, try to clean this up here a little bit um, so as I uh, you know without beating a dead horse right um, you know now what we've done is instead of just having one simple journal entry under specific ID okay when we have you know we're dealing with things like uh, grocery stores you know M&Ms you know uh, you know, uh, supp plumbing supplies, electrical supplies, construction supplies, uh, medical supplies, it doesn't matter, okay? And, you know, when you get into these smaller items that come and go very quickly, um, and you can't just identify one, you know, I mean, because let's face it, a syringe looks like a syringe, right? You know, you don't have two different two different types of syringes like you have two different types of cars, right? Um, you end up using this here gross profit method in order to be able to calculate your cost of goods sold. Right? So uh, that's the gross profit method. Um, and if you didn't understand it, you know, go ahead and read the textbook. Um, again, this was sort of covered in the math, um, uh, math videos on the student community. You might want to go back there and watch those, but I think this uh, gives you a, a sufficient enough uh, theory between what's in the textbook um, and what was presented in this video for you to be able to understand this concept. And if you don't, you know, watch the video again, read the book again, and if you still don't get it, you know, then feel free to contact an instructor, okay? And I'll see you in the next video for Focus on Decision Making, which kind of like comes at the end of every chapter. All right, see you then.